Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hi, I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD. And we're going to talk about why you should thread your sewing machine with your presser foot up. Uh, Mom, you want to talk about this a little bit? Let you start off. Like why it's my mantra? Yes, yes. Talk, uh, talk about your mantra. My mantra. Uh, if you come into our shop at any time, I can just speak up and say to my staff, so what's the first lesson in sewing? And they will all say... Thread Thread. with your presser foot up. Exactly. Because it's the most important thing and the one thing that I feel is neglected most when teaching someone to use a sewing machine or reteaching someone to use a sewing machine. And when I say reteaching, I'm talking about the fact that we have, you know, many people come in and say, oh, my grandmother taught me to sew, my grandfather, whoever, my dad, my mother taught me to sew. And I, I want to say to them, so did they tell you that when you thread your machine that the presser foot must be up? Right. I, I, I hear a lot of people, it's a mystery. It is, it is news to them. Right. Is, it, is it partially because maybe they really learned to sew on a really old machine or you think they just weren't doing it right? Well, are they lying? You know. Yes. <laughs> I say that I don't even mean I don't even mean purposefully lying, but some people also want to save face and are, are you know this they, this correlates to the people who say I made all my children's clothing right. for twenty years and then they come in they're like I don't know how to set in a sleeve and I'm like okay right. so was did they not have sleeves in their in their clothing which. Maybe they didn't have a sewing machine. Or maybe they just don't want to make a disparaging remark about their grandparents who taught them to sew. I don't know. I mean, people have different reasons for not knowing, remembering, or telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Well, and let me backtrack. When we talk about disparaging things and memories uh, and whatnot. Don't start talking about me now. That's right. I'm just going to use this as my free Uh, therapy session. Mallory's my daughter. If if no one knows. and she's No, no, no. uh, It has nothing to do with you. Don't worry about it. Okay, okay. But people, people come into the store and they say, you know, generally what they say is, I thread is balling up underneath my project. Uh, they say there's a bird's nest under my embroidery design or something like that. Or they just say my bobbin's screwing up. Yeah, my okay. bobbin thread is screwing so, up. So they right. say my bobbin thread's screwing up. My and bobbin's then, all messed up. And then what they say after that, they say I changed my bobbin tension. Right. I know there's something wrong with the bobbin. They're, they're very sure about this. and Because the mess is on the bobbin. On, the, on, the, on bottom, the bottom. Where yeah. the bottom is. Where the bobber is. is. Where the right. bobber is. Where the bobber is. The bobber. Yeah, the bobber. It's not a bobber, people. It's right. a bobbin. Right. Parts of a sewing machine will be another podcast, but uh, the that that's what we hear when we uh, have a repair come into a store, and people get a little offended when I ask them if they've threaded with their presser foot up, or or they bewildered or offended. Right. I feel like those are the two uh, two reactions, and the reason we ask, the reason we have to ask is, I don't we don't keep stats, but I'd say like forty percent of the machines that come in. That are threaded wrong. Yeah, they're threaded wrong. They're threaded incorrectly. They're threaded incorrectly. And and, and it's not always that the presser foot wasn't up, but we're saying threaded incorrectly. Some kind of – now, there's also – there can be other issues with the machine as well, like other reasons that the machine's not performing properly. But, yeah, And it can be more than one problem. It can be the thread and – you know, the threading and or another problem. Or the improper threading has caused – the problem. That's How true about too. That? That's happened also. Yes, yes, yes. That yes, can, yes, that can cause more of an issue. So then you get two problems. So right. tell us why, what happens when we raise our presser foot. So when you raise your presser foot, there are, are two discs in the top of your machine and they are tension discs. And um, pretty much the, you know, you've got your spool of thread and it goes through a a little guide on top of your sewing machine and then you'll bring your thread down through a slot well in that slot you might not be able to see it now on really old machines and when i say old like machines as old as me or older so that would be like he's like 99 i i am not (laughs) I, i i'm in the beginning of my second fifth decade is that right 
whatever. Six so machines from the 30s and 40s, right. 50s. 50s. Yeah, so let's yeah. say the 50s. Yeah, okay. 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 I'm a mid-century product. There you go. Anyway, um, those machines, you may be able to see the tension disc, or at that time, the disc was on the outside of the machine, and it sort of faced you, and it had little numbers on looks it. Looks like a circle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was a circle. It looked like a dial yeah, with sure. little numbers on sure. it. Okay, and that was your tension disc were there, and when you lift your presser foot, they opened up. Now, whether you noticed it or not, or, you know, grandma or grandpa noticed it or not, I don't know. But but if you're uh, sewing on a little brother from Walmart or a machine that's been purchased the last 30 years. Any, any machine that doesn't have the yeah. dial on the front, right. you're going through a thing that looks like a little slit, right? Uh, or a uh, symbols. I, I well, like, you don't see, but you don't see the symbols. Sure, sure. No, you don't see right. them. Yeah, you're going right. through a slit in a machine, and inside there's something that looks like symbols. Right. Yeah. Well, there's symbols on the dial, too. You just don't see them. They're behind <gasps> yeah, there. right. So right. there's these two little things, and they're called tension disc and Mallory's right they kind of look like simple symbols like symbols cling cling like in music not symbols like c-y-m-b-a thank you oh yes there we go right 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 so um when the presser foot is up those symbols or those tension discs open and when you lie the thread down through there the thread goes right in and then you know you you go to your next step of threading so you have placed your thread between the tension disc when you lower the foot it then secures it between those tension disc and you should be getting the proper tension on your thread on your upper thread on that's your upper thread yes. now people will say well, I didn't always do that, and on my old such-and-such such S machine, you know, or whatever, W machine, whichever one they want to be referring to, uh, I didn't know I had to do that. Well, sometimes you luck out. That's right. And the thread happens to fall properly between those or, you know, let itself go between there. Or you've laid it in the right place so that when you did raise your tension, uh, raise your presser foot. foot the tension disc happened to open and let it fall in well and then people will talk about this is where if you have a machine that you think is performing inconsistently exactly. if you've got a machine that will so great for you for a while mess up and then get back on track it's it's very likely you it, yeah it's it, that it, it that's, could be what we call op <laughs> O-E. O- o- e. I'm sorry. O- operator o- e. error. Yeah. Operator problem. I was going to say <laughs> operator performance, but anyway. Oh, oh. That sounds much more official. Okay. So, so yeah. Whatever. It's one of those. The, the reason we say that is because, you know, then if the machine's threaded properly and it works, then it's threaded improperly and it won't work, you know. Now, can if you've got some kind of electrical issue or something that's in, inconsistent, that can be a different story. But, you know, do keep that in mind. Right. But the other thing that can have happened is you have threaded improperly, not with those tension disc open, and you tried to sew. And, you know, not only maybe did you get that bird's nest on the bottom and you thought maybe you had a bobbin problem, but you could have shredded some thread in the upper tension area that's been left there now. Amen, sister. So even if you thread properly the next time, you may have caused yourself another problem. And there's other things that could have happened, and I don't know if we want to go into all those. I think what we should really talk about is, you know, j- threading properly is the first most important yeah. thing about your sewing Well, machine. so let me go to, in, you know, in the in the blog post, that, uh, in the article online, it's an article now, <laughs> um, <laughs> now that I said that. Now it's an we article. Don't, if, if you've got an issue, even if it appears to be some kind of tension issue when you're sewing on a project, don't immediately change the tension. Unthread your machine. The proper way to unthread is to clip that thread up next to the spool and pull it out in the direction of threading. So you'd be like pulling out, you know, right above Take your needle. Take it out of the needle yeah. and pull it out. Don't pull it through the needle because then you could be bending your needle. And that's another issue right. we could talk about someday. So, so unthread it like that and then re-thread properly. This can sometimes completely change the game. And what what I have, you know, the quotes, the customer quotes I have online are, well, I was having a tension issue, so I changed my tension. Well, changing your tension isn't going to do a thing 
if your thread isn't in the tension disc, That's right? right? That's right. Right. In so, fact, it, it may make the problem worse. Yes, it could, it could you know, change things uh, when you actually do thread it properly. And then you say, well, I did thread with my presser foot up. But then your tension's on zero or eight. Or, or, or you've uh, got some shredded thread in there from mm-hmm. the time you didn't thread that's right. properly. That's, that's right. That's a possibility also. Absolutely. So threading with your threading with your presser foot up, it can help you avoid things. Um, and I think that bobbin threading is also very important, but let's drop the big truth bomb on people. If you have birds nesting underneath your project, looping, thread, trash, all that, underneath the project, the side near the feed dogs and the bobbin, it is actually a top tension issue. As well as the opposite. That's correct. If you have a top issue with your thread, you've got thread looping on the top or... thread not going to the bottom, it it means you have a problem in the bottom. Yep. So if you have ugly on top, you've got problems on the bottom. And if you have ugly on bottom, you're having problems on top. That's right. So you when you get that bird's nesting, this is what I'm talking about with multiple problems. Right. When you get all that loose thread down there, basically the thread has been unregulated from the top and your needle's bringing it down. Your take-up lever's bringing it down. It's unregulated. So there's a bunch of stuff down there. That can jam up your bobbin area. If you have like a drop-in bobbin, then you're going to perhaps punch holes in that bobbin case. Then you got a loud sound down there, you know, or, or you know, it's shredding thread for you. Etc. Right. You know, lots You're starting of to bend needles and then maybe yep. eventually break needles. That's right. That's right. Um, that that will have a problem. So if you have threaded incorrectly, if you rethread, sometimes you need to clean out your bobbin area too. Right. You know, it's not. It's it. It, it begins to precipitate a lot the, of other. The issues. other thing you can do when we talk about, you know not having that tension up the top and you think you've threaded, you have threaded with that presser foot up this time and you think you've, you know, corrected the problem, you can actually take like an index card, say, and run it through those open tension discs and see if any loose threads comes out. So that, this is, these are things you can do, you know, before you have to call your dealer. Yeah, you know, troubleshooting. And we'll tell you to do this over the phone. You know, we'll we'll offer these up and uh, we've got a pretty good uh, troubleshooting page on our website actually and let me talk about let's talk about how uh gina came in here and gina had a fairly new embroidery machine mm-hmm. like fairly and gina's new. knowledgeable yeah yeah and yes. it was uh it was like a week old or something and we sewed on it here in the store with her that's what we do we let her sit down delivery and it's looking great and she goes home she sews for a while and she notices on the back of her project she sees no bobbin thread absolutely none like because she, she, with embroidery your top thread usually is a different color than your bobbin thread. Yes, so so that's why it's very obvious and, and on to a, see this. Yeah, on a satin stitch. Right. So let's put, picture some text being embroidered out. So it's a bunch of very close together, you know, horizontal stitches, if you want to think about it right. like that. Um, and on the back, the bar should look about a third bobbin thread, two-thirds top thread. Your top thread does get pulled down to the bottom uh, a little more than with regular sewing. The tension's different in embroidery, but she wasn't seeing any. You know, her gold thread was a perfect bar on the back. And we were like, oh, there, so there's something wrong with the top tension. And I thought, I don't really remember this being an issue when we were sewing before, you know, during your delivery. And we sent the machine back to Daniel, and he only had to open it up a very little bit, and he got a piece of thread trash out of the upper the tension. Upper tension. There was like, right. And it was a color that was like in the samples that right. she was showing us. It was like the maroon right. color. So she said, how can I do this? So mention the index card. Also, sometimes if you use a heavier thread, like a 12 weight, you know, or a, a dental size, floss. Yeah. Unwaxed Un- dental floss waxed dental, dental floss. floss dental oh, floss is one of those yeah. non-sewing notions that you should probably have in your sewing and the room. dental floss is flat that's why right. it's nice you know and to, strong yeah, and strong to get in there it won't break it won't put more thread <laughs> right. now if somebody comes in with a bunch of dental floss up in there it should be new floss also <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's right. And don't use it afterwards, maybe, <laughs> unless you want sewing machine oil in your teeth. Uh, doing that, that can get that out of there. Sometimes you can see it. You know, Mom talked about how the symbols on a newer machine are hidden. If you get a flashlight and you look in there, you know, and squint one of your eyes, 
I can see it. And when I do a delivery, I show people, I raise and lower the presser foot, and I say, can you see a little glint of light? You can also hear it. Yeah, and you can hear it. You can hear the symbols, you know, yeah. come together and come apart. So the the solid top thread on the back of the project indicated to us unregulated top thread. Right. T- top thread that was not receiving the proper tension. And, okay, Gina was threading properly. Right. You know, but there was that thread trash up there. But I've seen that as well when people don't thread with the press foot. And actually, the embroidery didn't look half bad. No, it didn't. <laughs> you know, props because the machine was actually sewing pretty well <laughs> for having a big wad of thread in the tension disc. So, you know, there's that. Uh, I'm trying to think of, you know, so- something, you know, any other... Uh, Sergers, well, same thing. You know, Just, if, if you look on the blog post, you'll see the um, lithograph you did. Is that yeah, what that is? Yeah, the a lithograph. lithograph. Yep. And and Mallory Mallory isn't going to tell you this, but I will. That that lithograph was done in Paris, and it was done in a uh, studio where um, Picasso and uh, Matisse, Matisse, and the other guy that looks like Picasso stuff. Uh, ke- uh, Kandinsky? Kandinsky. He also apparently uh, did some work there. And that's where she actually etched that lithograph out. But what you'll see is she has a picture of a woman with her legs sort of up in the air and over the sewing machine table. Because years ago, I went, I used to answer the phone and I would say, well, did you thread with your foot up? And we had a tech who said, Zidi, you have half the women in the world with their foot like up in the air and they're trying to thread Thread their their machine. machine. Yep, yep. We're getting literal here. So (laughs) I started trying to say thread with your presser foot up. But that that is the uh, joke around here is thread with your foot in the air. Well, and I just will point out that there is an exaggerated presser foot lever (laughs) in the lithograph and you can see that it is up. Do you see that, Mom? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, I just want to apologize for the text. When you do a lithograph, everything has to be backwards. So I had to write in cursive backwards, okay? Uh, and then I had to also think about the machine backwards, too, because, you know, a sewing machine, the needle's on the left, you know, the your, you know, the belt and everything is on the right. Yeah, but so, you have her garter in the right place. Yes, every everything's <laughs> everything else is proper. She's wearing some pretty, pretty awesome heels. She's got a, a, a neat-looking vintage sewing you know, machine table. Yeah, that could be another blog post, sewing in your high heels, because, you know, I had a habit of doing that for years. High heels and underwear. Well, I was, that's the name I was of, saving that for that's later. That's the name of my memoir. Is so it? So back off, yeah. okay? okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But my husband used to say, I love when you sew. You're always in your high heels and your underwear. Yeah, because you got to keep trying on your stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that's pretty much it for threading with your presser foot up. I I, I can't think of much else to say about it, but I want, do it. I want, like, first refusal on the memoir. I need to read it before it's – and edit it. Before oh, it I'll wait till you're dead. Don't worry. Oh, thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you. All right. You know, the all Kennedys right. waited, like, 50 years after their parents died. Before they published it. Well, if I have the income stream that the Kennedys have, <laughs> sure. But if I'm needing, you know, a little something, I'll publish my memoir. Okay. So maybe not well, when you're I dead, just when you're it. senile. Okay. Won't. okay. <laughs> 50 years after I lose my mind. Yeah, okay, that's, right. that's it. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll uh, see you later. See you next week. Have fun sewing, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com. 